So in our attempt to take a look at the first theme, which is this idea of normalization and activation, what we want to do is landscape some drills to serve as examples in all four quadrants. The reason why this is important is it's going to start to create some clarity to how we use this four quadrant approach to different themes. So if we talk about this normalization activation and we are in the upper left hand quadrant, what we can do is we can actually choose some drills that may be weighted isometrics. So let me, let me explain. If I want to create some stress to the body and I want to create less complexity movement wise, I may try to get a neuromuscular increase or activation using either an isometric approach or something like a single leg RDL. And what we'll teach is neuromuscular compliance but we also activate the system. So for instance, if someone's sitting down all day long and their glutes are dormant, uh, this particular protocol may be a weighted solution and as an example, an exercise that we can put in this upper left quadrant. If we move along and we're looking at now the lower left quadrant, in still in this normalization activation, we can do this idea of linear movement re-education. So think about things like planks, uh, think about things like glute bridges. Again, these are all ways in which to facilitate a neuromuscular increase to get the most out of the body in preparation for other things. We can even do some isolated activation exercises. For instance, individuals could stand and consciously contract the pelvic floor, for instance, or consciously activate the, uh, the, the core musculature as a way to create neurogenesis. So these are re-education exercises that serve as a precursor to more of the working blocks. If we carried on to the, the bottom right quadrant, we can actually do some more movement-based re-education protocols. So for instance, an example might be I'm on all fours and I'm prone and I'm doing a thread the needle pattern. So what I'm doing is I'm creating relevance in shoulder motion, thoracic motion and pelvic motion and I'm introducing a slight degree of movement stress to normalize the system. So that would be an exercise example in the normalization phase that we could go through in the bottom right. Now at this point what I would want to mention is that we're going to go in much more detail in each section. So right now don't worry about necessarily memorizing each of these particular drills but get a flavor of understanding what might fit in all of these categories uh, so that you can get a clear understanding of the 4Q conceptually first. And then in the upper right hand quadrant, the loaded movement quadrant, if we're thinking about activation, we can do things like a three-dimensional loaded neuromuscular task. So we can take a look at lateral band walks. So if I had a squat position, an athletic ready position, I wrapped a band around my thigh, my mid thigh, and I was just going through, let's say, a lateral walk going from one direction and then going into the opposite direction. What we're doing is we're flexing in the sagittal plane, which is one plane of motion. We are walking in or our pelvis is translating in the frontal plane, and it is a great way to activate the glutes and to upregulate the neuromuscular input to the body. And that's specifically what we may need because of the positions that an individual put themselves in, chronically sitting, for instance. So these are just a few examples of many that we have in all four quadrants so that we can normalize and uh, activate the system. And this would be part of a kind of a warm-up strategy or an activation strategy in an anatomical adaptation phase of a program.